You either care about iDubbbz' newest drama video or you don't. Intro over. So iDubbbz starts his new response by saying he's going to be crystal clear about not liking his old fans, something which initially sounds like a step in the right direction. I've realized that I need to be crystal clear about what I believe, so there's no room for ambiguity. But when you put into perspective that he drip read that point throughout the course of videos and podcasts adjacent to his channel while not being on his channel, combined with him releasing the Froggy Fresh response after the fight as opposed to it being as soon as possible, it's hard to see this upload as something other than drama farming. I'm not shaming, just merely pointing out how it was structured. He goes to apologize for doing the content cops since he sees them as unnecessary harassment as opposed to edgy critique of character. You know, some of the videos I've made have been very, not edgy. I don't think they, they, you know, some of these videos were edgy. I think they were just outright cruel. Want to hear a little secret? Being edgy and being offensive are not mutually exclusive. In this instance, iDubbbz being offensive was absolutely necessary in a lot of these scenarios. Let's put this into perspective. You're trying to tell a 19-year-old white woman who had been middle to upper middle class for most of her life that she's done something wrong. She grew up in Vegas for most of her life, and here's a figure of the six lowest IQ states. As you can see, Tana and I, me, are like two pills in a roofie. Our consumers are really fucking bad at foreplay. Combine this with her big ego and a much bigger following than I dubs, and yeah, it would be really hard for his criticism to be heard if he didn't go to the extent that he did. She was kind of in an ivory tower at the time. Considering he himself says later it took him 32 years and a slap to the face to learn empathy, he understands that a slap to the face is necessary. And the issue is that people react differently to differing degrees even though they experience similar events. What may be a life-altering event for iDubbbz will be a minor moral hurdle to someone as vapid as Tyne Among You or someone as inattentive as me. Now, there are some times where it doesn't work, as is the case with Leafy, a person who was entrenched in the culture iDubbbz was a part of at the time, and as a result hadn't changed too much from it. One of the big reasons why he was able to come back is because iDubbbz is lack of content cop, making an audience ripe for the picking. The rest of the channels either adapted like Keemstar and Tana, or ended up dying as a result of the trend set out by iDubbbz by calling out content that is predatory towards children, forcing them to go on YouTube Kids. There is a content cop that I would consider needlessly harsh, and that would be the Fine Brothers one, since it meanders and partakes in what iDubbbz himself called out Leafy on, which is the anti-jokes, where he brings up Jewish features and says, no, I'm not going to talk about that ugly stuff. He was also considerably late to the party in this scenario, meaning he didn't really inspire any change, at least any that wasn't set into motion already by other people. I was morally grandstanding and acting as if I am any better than any of these people that I was making Content Cop videos on. This claim that Content Cop was moral grandstanding is rather interesting. One of his most iconic lines is, it's either all okay or none of it's okay, which he brings up in the video. The first part is the one that a majority of his audience took the heart, but the latter half implies that those who don't engage in such behavior deserve to be treated somewhat cordially. If you show respect, you receive respect kind of deal. It's also noteworthy that he wasn't critiquing from an ivory tower. Content cop was him getting his hands dirty, literally in some instances, and stooping to a level playing field. Ironically, it seems as though now he is morally grandstanding by associating with people like Hassan and Ethan who frequently talk about whites negatively and using white slurs, while iDubbbz is making jokes about not saying such slurs in the Creator Clash promotion and not allowing Froggy Fresh to participate for associating with Sam Hyde, with the hypocrisy of him allowing Harley to go further than Froggy by having him post training videos before Creator Clash to his YouTube after basically anything Sam Hyde has said on MDE. I'll try to bring up his Froggy Fresh video as little as possible since I'm late for various reasons. But his point of not wanting to take away any life lessons people have learned from the video seems rather disingenuous when paired up with how much trash he's talking to his old fans and not wanting to associate with them even prior to the making of this video. It's complete speculation, but I think that this statement was meant to provoke interaction. His definition of content in the video is also asinine. Content in the context of an event called Creator Clash would imply that the main production of the creators is their monetized content, hence the term content creator. I don't consider posts on items as Instagram content because that's not his source of income or fame. If I'm flat out wrong, invite Kira to Creator Clash or any other Twitter user for that matter. And I've also created a culture of uh, apathy and, I don't know, a lot of, like, cruelty as well, like... 
I understand the point of being responsible for your audience. He's definitely inspired people to harass these channels, even without directly stating it. But at the same time, if he could control his audience, you'd think they'd be more receptive to his new content. His sex worker video would not have nearly as many dislikes, and neither would his Froggy Fresh video. I fully believe that, even if iDubs were an introduction to a lot of people's ideals when it comes to free speech, they would have come to a similar, either all of it's okay or none of it's okay, stance on the issue. But Griff Chan, it's his former audience. They would have listened to him in his prime, of course. They were literal children at the time. Okay, then how do you explain this clip of Idub saying that he wouldn't hold a thumbs up while saying a racial slur? Another thing that Tana got wrong that really infuriates me is she said I gave a thumbs up. I'm not a fucking animal, Tana. I wouldn't give a thumbs up after saying a racial slur. His audience didn't seem dogmatically receptive to that when it came out. I'm not saying that he had no influence, but to pretend as though his audience heard that racial slurs are okay and there's a reason why they don't bring up the I wouldn't hold a thumbs up clause to it is rather skeptical. He does bring up the fact that he's attracted such an audience, but his fixation on saying he's indoctrinated people implies that he's the sole reason why they're like this. I am responsible for creating a lot of hurtful and damaging content on this channel. It's also indoctrinated a lot of people into thinking that this is an okay way to behave. And it's not. It's, it's super irresponsible and shitty. Now, now that I don't feel like it represents me and I want to distance myself from it and keep it from, you know, indoctrinating more people. I find the apology for the hate that the content got these creators is understandable. Uncontrollable audiences is why most creators today put disclaimers on the front of their videos, and there's a big difference between harsh criticism and spamming in DMs. But I think these apologies shouldn't really be praised, because it's good that they're happening in retrospect. Had he just not made the video, or just folded and apologized at the time, none of these people would have changed and a lot of these movements wouldn't have gotten off the ground. I don't like how he says he doesn't want to be the cup of tea for his old fans. He claims to have all this influence over them and wants to take responsibility, but instead of reaching an olive branch out to the people whom he supposedly radicalized, he just wants to leave them behind forever. I wouldn't label Tana a racist. No, not because she's a crusader for Black Lives Matter. I wouldn't deem her a racist because I don't know what's in here or what's in here. But the fascinating part about all of this is that she won't offer me or any of you guys the same level of respect. He wants them to just figure it out themselves, as though he didn't require any help getting to where he is today. At this point in time, he kind of put himself between a rock and a hard place. Either he takes responsibility for what his fans do, and he's being very irresponsible by not leading them into the right direction, or he shouldn't take responsibility for what his fans do, and therefore it's fine for him to alienate them. His conclusion is a mixed bag. On one hand, he talks about what it's like being sociopathic and tries to give advice to his incel goblin cave-dwelling audience. This shows how much he pushed those fans away throughout not only the past few years, but also the majority of the video. You were indoctrinated by me alone, and cultural racism is still racism. Most of my fans are incel cave dwellers. If you took this part of the video out in isolation, I would call it extremely bare bones, but not entirely antagonistic or self-defeating. Again, he talks about wanting to take responsibility for his audience, but he alienates them before grandstanding them, meaning that they are less likely to be receptive to whatever he has to say to them. Since the point of the items video is about clarity, I would like to accede and reiterate my points as clearly as possible. The content cops were an absolute positive, as they forced people who would have not changed to change in one way or another. I respect him for wanting to vet his community and do different content creation, but still using the same branding for something antithetical to what the name represented is disheartening at best and antagonistic at worst. Despite saying he wants to take responsibility for his audience, he hasn't shown any indication of wanting to goad them in the right direction. He hasn't really put out any helping videos towards that. It's mostly just drama or some stupid squirrel stuff. It's almost like he wants to have his cake and eat it too. He wants to say, oh, I've distanced myself from these people. These people, yeah, I don't want to be their cup of tea. Hmm. But on the other hand, he wants to say, oh no, I've tried helping these people out. Neither of these are bad ideas, but don't wonder why somebody would want to watch Sam Hyde's content while calling them cave dwellers for watching yours, and not presenting any arguments to convince them that their preconceptions that you admittedly planted in their brains are wrong.
I'm trying to add constructive criticism here, but it's way too late for anything to be effective. I think the video itself is bad, but at least he finally said his piece. I'm also late to the party, so I'll just add this incomplete thesis as a closing statement. Content cops as a video genre are dead. Not because Ian stopped uploading, but because presenting arguments in a semi-historical format is more compelling and arguably replaced the commentary genre. Calling something a drama video implies that the person speaking is emotional and in the moment. Everyone is quick to latch onto any compelling pieces of information that fit their worldview. But the term retrospective or iceberg, you can just slap that onto it. Now you're a historian who's able to see this all from the perspective of an evolved species. If only there were someone to police this behavior. Not Ian though, fuck that nigga.